Hey, good afternoon everybody. I am back at the scope again and hopefully my phone doesn't fall off this time. Uh, I've made a squash mount uh, of what I think uh, is a dicarian and I'm happy to see that I see a clamp connection. Um, so again, this is, this is uh, really, really quite difficult. But if you look right there in the center of the screen, you'll see basically two pieces of hyphae that are um, kind of connected with the, the septa there. And as I focus up and down, let me put it near the pointer. Uh, ignore the little purple uh, balls. Those are pigments from the dye that I use. But if you look right uh, at the pointer and I'm focusing up and down with the microscope, that is a clamp connection. Okay, so as I go up and down, and, and let me try to move this a little bit. Ooh, I've got my camera zoomed in, and I've got it on 400x on the scope, but uh, right there, dead at the end of the pointer uh, in the lower part of the screen, there, that is a clamp connection. So these in this culture don't seem to be really super prevalent, but that is a 100% indication right there that you've got a dicarion culture. So uh, clamp connections may not be on every single, well, they will not be on every single septa. Um, they kind of form and then they just sort of degrade and they will often sort of turn and just, uh, I, don't, I don't know, they just kind of disappear, they deflate or whatever. Um, but that is definitely, I've, I've done this quite a few times and that is definitely a clamp connection. So you may have to look at a still shot and maybe have a, uh, an illustration, maybe a drawing of what exactly we're looking at here. Because as you can see, there's a lot of debris uh, in the field. This, this kind of thing is not very pretty. These aren't like the pretty videos, you know, you see on like a David Attenborough, like, <laughs> you know, BBC documentary. Um, the fields generally look like this. There's all kinds of debris and crap. Um, and if you're, if you're using, you know, um, agar or gelan or whatever, and uh, there's always going to be bits and pieces. Plus, I'm not really good at uh, washing my flask after I use them for agar. agar. So, um, so, yeah, I don't really care. I see a clamp connection. I've got a clean culture. On the plate, it looks very nice and rhizomorphic. So, I'm quite happy. Um, I'll look for another clamp right now, uh, but once you see one clamp, that's, that's pretty much all you need to see. Assuming you have a monoculture and you have, uh, you know, you've kind of isolated it from, from, from any other things that might be on the plate, you can be pretty certain that you're dealing with a dicarion culture. So the original culture, what I'll do is I'll take a subculture from right next to the spot where I got this little rice size a uh, piece of agar and mycelium and made a squash mount. Uh, again, you, you, you'll see, and I'll subculture that. So again, you'll see lots of debris, like something like this um, here that was probably a clamp right there again at the end of the pointer. Uh, again, I don't know if I would call that a clamp conclusively, but as, as I go up and down with the, uh, with the focal knob here, it's looking more and more like a clamp. So I can see there's a septa. See how it kind of fades in and out there. And you may have to, with your scope, mess with the condenser on the bottom. That's this thing that basically is, is what people used to call the aperture on cameras. So it restricts. So there you can let more light in. Um, and, you know, it's going to, my camera on my phone is going to try to refocus here. Um, you can mess with that. So there, it's looking more like a clamp now. You can see the clamp on the lower left, uh, right hand, uh, left hand side. Um, and, and again, as you go up and down, you can kind of see the septa and you can see the clamp and then you mess with the condenser. Uh, and sometimes it'll change the contrast and sort of the refractive kind of properties of whatever you've smashed under there. So that, again, that's kind of looking more like, so I'll, I'll stop down the condenser. When you stop down the condenser or you make the aperture smaller, it increases your depth of field. So that means you don't have to focus up and down so much when you're looking around on these fields. Um, now let me find, I, I would, if I wasn't doing a video, I would probably go on and try to find like at least five or six. Maybe I'll get lucky here. Um, this is a relatively young culture that may also be why it's from a multi-spore, uh, germination. So this may be also, uh, the reason why there's not a whole lot of clamps everywhere. Um, but again, something like this, you got to be careful. Don't don't trick yourself. That thing right there. Again, let me try to get it at the pointer. Now, again, something like this. This I don't know, man. That may or may be a clamp. I wouldn't call it a clamp. Um, 
like if you see if you see what you think are clamps, you want to make darn sure because you don't want to go propagating a dicarian culture and try to fruit it um, if it was just simply some sort of debris or some artifact from your mount. Um, if you can find you know hyphae like this that are nice and linear and have a, a clamp connection somewhere back prior to that terminal cell, that's always nice because the um, that's the sort of the freshest cell. <clears throat> so they will um, they will likely have a clamp right before that terminal cell. Um, but again, you can see this is this is probably why a lot of people don't make videos doing this kind of stuff because it's quite tedious. Um, but again, it's really really important. You don't want to waste your time. The next video I'm going to try to make, which a lot of people I know are going to uh, probably enjoy or find excruciatingly uh, annoying, is, is, is looking for monocarions. So the problem is you're, when you're looking for monocarion cultures, i.e. haploid cultures that you would want to mate, you're not looking for anything in particular. You're just looking for the absence of it. So imagine doing what I'm doing right now for about 10 minutes and at some point you have to call it a day and say I don't see any clamps therefore I have a monocarion culture. Now when you look at the culture you might say well can I is it tomentose is it rhizomorphic I hate to say it to be honest um, I don't know how important of a characteristic that is macroscopically um, it, it can be indicative, uh, just as kind of a quick glance, you know, that'll take us two, three seconds. But if you really, really want to get into breeding and stuff like that, you're just going to have to get under the scope. Uh, and again, this is really tedious. It's a lot of uh, mechanical manipulation. Um, and if you've never used a scope, you're going to have a lot of, uh, it's a steep leaning, learning curve, we could say. So again, you know, uh, the, we don't have a David Attenborough's like production crew at home or a, a dedicated mycolo, uh, microscopy section. So I'd love to find one more clamp in here. Again, I'm just searching around. But again, this culture is relatively young. Um, in fact, you may see a lot of septa, which are the little, you know, the little walls between the cells. And they just simply won't have clamps, even on a proper dicarion culture that you may have fruited multiple times. You look at it and you're like, wow, I don't see any clamps. And in fact, a lot of basidiomycetes, and especially if you're looking at fruit bodies um, or in the gill tissue and things like that, they may or may not even have clamps. Um, it's quite common for basidiomycetes not to have clamps or you just simply can't find them. Also, if you're looking at older herbarium specimens that have been sitting in a box somewhere for, you know, 50 years or 100 years, you may just simply never find um, a clamp connection. So, again, I'd love to find at least three or four more here before I call this a dicarion, but I did see that one. Um, so, this is, it's, it's tedious. Uh, again, and, and, you know, imagine doing this for about 10 minutes and you don't find any clamps. You might want to assume uh, or, or conclude that that's a, a monocarion. Again, don't get real super excited if you don't see clamps. I've done this thousands, if not tens of thousands of times. And the fact that right now I can't find another um, clamp connection is kind of annoying me, to be honest. Um, because there should be at least a few more. Um, I don't know. But again, I, I think you get the picture. This is... This is not uh, not an easy uh, not an easy thing to do. I'm just quite happy I've got the phone to work uh, relatively well here. Um, so if you if you were looking for monocarians, I hate to use this as an example, but you'd be looking for things like this, where you've got a septa. See where the pointer is, where you've got a septa and you don't see a clamp. <laughs> so since this is a, a dicarion, I'm, I'm almost hundred percent certain. Uh, because it was a multi-spore and I, I used a fair amount of spores, I would assume that there would be many more clamps, but, um, but you know, again, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, it has the right macroscopic morphology, and I saw that one clamp there. Uh, other people, they might say, to look on the very periphery of the culture. Some people I've heard look at the it's more the central part of the older part of the culture. I'm not sure uh, whether all that vice is as conclusive as you um, might be led to believe. 
Um, also, you might see things like this big orange glob here. Um, if I was looking at a culture that maybe had some color to it, that would be very disconcerting because I would tend to think that might be some kind of chlamydospore um, or arthrospore or there's, there's a whole different kinds of asexual caniniospores or uh, canidia. Um, uh, these, are, these are probably, again, just artifacts of the, the gel preparation, uh, the agar. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll subculture it and I'll let it grow for maybe four or five days and I'll look at it again. So I'll, I'll put a little plus on the plate to indicate that I think it's a dicarion and then I'll maybe put a little question mark next to it. Uh, and I might even write the date, you know, depending on how much I'm feeling like doing record keeping. But I don't see a single, maybe come on one more. Come on, baby, come on, come on. People tell me you got to talk to your fungus. Um, anyway, I don't think I'm going to find another clamp in this in this culture. And uh, again, like I said, this is sort of, you know, imagine when you're doing breeding experiments, you want to make sure that you have monocarions. So imagine doing this kind of thing with, you know, <laughs> lots of different samples. Uh, there's another thing you might notice here. Even when you have a clean culture, the, the hyphae, for some reason, uh, you know, sometimes they're fat, sometimes they're just, they're just skinny. I, I don't really see a pattern of that in many, many years of experience. I don't really see much of a pattern to that. Some people will talk about the branching and how they're like maybe 90 degrees. That's an indication of a, a kind of contaminant we call sclerotinia, uh, rhizoctonia. I can't remember which one. It's a, it's a turf grass disease. Um, but I isolated this from a monospore, you know germination of, of our normal basidiomycetes, so I don't reckon this is any contaminant. Um, that being said, with monocarions also, you have to be careful that you're not looking at a contaminant because basidiomycete fungi are the only ones that form clamps, so the absence of clamps may mean you have a monocarion or it may also mean that you have a contaminant. So that being said, I, I, now I have a little fear in my heart that this may not be a pure basidiomycete culture. I may have to subculture this a few more times. I think this is only the uh, second transfer, the T2 of a, of a multi-spore, so there may still be something floating around in here. Um, so I saw that one clamp. That might just be simply because there's, a, there's like different things growing in here. So anyway, I'll subculture that. Looks okay on the plate, but who knows? But yeah, I don't know. I saw maybe what is that? Two or three living kind of putative clamps. I would love to see another one just for the video here, but I guess that's not gonna happen, you guys. Anywho, I'll try on the monocarion. I don't know. Um, I think some people are gonna be disappointed. It's <laughs> not gonna be. It's it's not gonna be very exciting. Oh, uh, come on, baby. One more. Come on, please. No. All right. Well, it's time to go shut off the pressure cooker. So I guess I'll give, <laughs> I'll give, I'll give this a, a call. This anyway, I'll, I hope you enjoy this. I'll, I'll try again and uh, hopefully I can find something a little bit more um, informative. But, but the microscope work is just, you just got to get in there and do it. Um, and you know, if you're, if you're bored later, you go find some moss in your garden and you look at tardigrades and, you know, um, <laughs> go, go see what's, you know, growing in your bird bath. Um, anywho, I will post this and see, see if, uh, hopefully, um, you guys are all, thank you for watching my, my videos. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.